star sailor and poor misguided fool. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. The K-Man, round of applause for K-Man. Yeah. Uh, but no one's uh, announced who you are. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. It's XFM 104.9. Saturday afternoon, if you didn't know that, <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned it, that was stupid really, you must know that by now. Well we've got some great things coming up, we have indeed. We? We've got songs and chat and things. We'll also of course be um, running through the white van man questions from the sun again, but this time Carl will be answering them, I look forward to that. Yeah. Can we do that fairly soon? Oh. Because there's some good questions this week. Yeah, um, we will, but um, as I was coming in there was uh, like a bunch of um, posh lads, I think university students, trying to get in, because they're doing one of those... Um, uh, scavenger hunts, but they have to get points for charity and do stuff. And one of theirs is get on a live radio show. Right. So I sort of, sort of felt sorry for them. So I've I said they could come on here just for five minutes. Who are that's they? Right. And they're just. Um, are they toffs? They are sort of like toffs, but they're trendy toffs. They're so obviously trendy toffs. I don't know yeah. that. Is that like L Lady Victoria <laughs> Hervey? Is she a no, no I don't mean that. No, they they're both sort of like that. Um, Will of Popeye. Right, right, right. They right, like, right, they right, like right. him, sort of like trendy but posh. Okay. They seem nice enough and they're doing it, they're doing it for a cancer charity and um, uh, they just get... They they've get got, for what, is it like they got their sponsor to do various Exactly, shows, I don't right? know quite how it works, but they're going to they're gonna come on and... Because um, we get... The, for coming on this live radio show, they get 17,000 points. Right, good. If I can put that in context, yep. if they were to say, did it help deliver a baby... They only get seven thousand two hundred and fifty well, points, but it's much easier. <laughs> it is. There's yeah. lot. There's lots of women just happily dropping sprogs all posh. over the place. You can't get on a live radio show exactly. these days for exactly. love no money. That's true enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, when are they coming in? Uh, uh Carl what, said they're going to. One thirty. I had a word with them. Okay. What and, did you make um, of them? They are posh. Really. But um, they said they're going to wander about and go and see if they can deliver a baby and that, and then come back here for one thirty, and. Uh, I don't know if it. Um, um, I hope they don't like it, leave a be baby sort of half out. You know, they've got, they've got it. You know, they push, push, push. Sorry, we're going to have to shoot off. We've got to yeah, go see. We've, we've got to play an instrument in a marching <laughs> band for eight thousand five hundred <laughs> points. Well, I did say be here definitely at one thirty because I don't want you getting in the way of the white van question. Oh, sure. the other thing sure. is right. They get seven thousand uh, five hundred points for delivering a baby, but they get. 9,000 points if they cut Peter Stringfellow's hair. Well, he's, you know, he's, he's very it's, precious about his hair. It's a more delicate operation, <laughs> isn't it? There's more that can go wrong. That's true enough. Take an unconventional animal for a walk in a park. What an is an unconventional, unconventional animal? I think that could be a dog that just doesn't play by the rules. Yeah, that's a dog that's into Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that wheeze in a urinal. Yeah, exactly. Standing up. Exactly. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward well, to yeah, that. I'm sure they're lovely guys. Good luck. Yeah, them. we'll see you later. Sold the world. Carl's all confused because it didn't tell you it was ended, did it? What is that then? Is that a sort of glitch in the computer? <laughs> Just applause, isn't it? Okay, they it. might start swearing. You know what they're like. Yeah. Rock, star <laughs> rock stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Their blue language. Yeah, and all their uh, habits. Oh. And all that. Yeah, I like it says track ending now. So it's Stop talking now, about it. That's in, that's that you're giving away all the secrets of radio and that. People think it's like an old piece of vinyl that we've put on a needle, you know. Like those old bits of footage of Tony Blackburn, that's what they think it's like. They don't realise there's computers doing it all. Yeah. Rick, you're, you're showing them behind the curtain. Never do that. I won't. I Never won't. do that, mate. Um, in the week, uh, I called Carl up. I said, how are you, mate? He said, not too bad. Uh, now, as you know, his girlfriend's been away for um, ages, hasn't she? Yeah. Covering the World Cup. The uh, African, African Nations. Nations Cup. She's a sports journalist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I love the fact you're thinking. What does that mean? Like, well, she's not much of a journalist, Rick. To be honest, oh. I've read some of her stuff. No, but she's not on air. She does stuff, you know, yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. A lot of journalists do. You, 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 you want to make clear that you're not going out with Kate Aidy. That's what you want to make clear, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, so she she's seen none of the the meteoric rise of Carl as right. a broadcaster. She's been away for the whole time. A since you've sort of become yeah. a wit. Yeah. Um, a cult figure, oh, to be yeah. honest. And he hadn't, he hadn't told her this, so uh, <laughs> apparently he went home and she was sitting there looking a bit grumpy. He went, all right, so yeah. She went, should we go out then? He went, she went, I'm not sure I want to go out with an idiot. Right? Oh, no. Yeah, because, and she went, Loch Ness Monster. Why don't you just think, of course the Loch Ness Monster lives in Loch Ness. And she was giving a bit of a hard time. And she went, that's why I don't, he said, that's why I, I didn't tell her. I, you know, I didn't tell her really. Same thing happened when I was at school and I had to play drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> I didn't tell my parents, right? <laughs> But my dad turned up anyway, <laughs> and what happened? He, um... How old were you, Carl? 
Well, it was it was the school that I used to go to. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. So oh yeah. You went. Well, you used to go to the school you used to go to. <laughs> no, but what I mean go is, on. I didn't go to secondary, did I? So I missed a lot of that. Sure. But primary, I like. Oh. It was okay. all colouring in and stuff. Yep. And um, <laughs> it was a Christmas play, and I managed to get a part in it. And, um, Did you audition? No. Um, got a part in it, and I should have been playing the drums to uh, the one about kings. The three, we three kings. Yeah. Yep. I was meant to, meant to be doing that, but little donkey came on and it was one of those what do you mean came on that was like next up on, on you know the, la- the the next song right right and it's one of them songs that you can't help sort of tap it along to yeah do you know like um, like if I if I was to go um, hmm. yeah you'd have to finish it with yeah do you know that they actually send that into space do they and what hoping the aliens will respond with that yeah they do do that because apparently it's it <laughs> It is one of the things that you can't help. <laughs> what, even if you're an alien life form? Yeah. They, they know that, do they? Yeah. But anyway. What, can they watch Star Trek or something? Hello. Do, 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 do. Knock, knock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> who's, 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 like, if who's you send out knock, knock into yeah. space, yeah, they have to say something. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Ah, that is, that is great. Seriously. Hold on, what's... Something out there. It was a little green fellow. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. So anyway, that is little fantastic. donkey. Little donkey is like one of them tunes that you can't. And I was there, and they had the drumstick, and I thought, oh god. The I, drumstick. I could feel myself. And anyway, just wanting to do it. Yeah. I started going along and playing little donkey, which I wasn't meant to do, but it went down such a storm. <laughs> What, were there people like parents and that dozing off and then suddenly they heard your version of Little Donkey they thought, wait a minute, now it's really picking up. What do you mean I'm glad we paid a pound fifty for this. What do you mean it went down such a storm? They're going, hold on, is it, was it like when Ringo... People have in the air. It like when Ringo joined the Beatles and they were going, yeah. boo, Pete Best, but they went... <laughs> yeah, they like, went, whoa! whoa. <laughs> oh, God. No, but the teacher just said, oh, it went down really well, you can do that again tonight. Right. When you're in it again. But anyway, so my dad was there... And, um, and you hadn't told him about this performance, no, so he just turned did. up I off his own back. I never took the lighters home and stuff to so no. you know, show my mum and dad, because it just put me off. So, um, anyway, he turned up, don't know why, he must have heard from someone else's dad. Yeah. He turned up, mm-hmm. and um, he, he swore about me, which... Did he? I, I, I don't... Can you, could you, f- could you use a, a word that... Is to be said? The word? Of course it is. Right. If you've if you got a kid in the car or anything, you can turn it down. It's now God, yeah. Right? But he said... Um, it, there was a guy stood next to him with a camera, big video camera filming it. And he said, yeah, film it, but try and avoid getting the twat in the hat in the shot. Because I had one of those porters, you know, the little round pork pie hats on. Right. This is so what, sad. What, was this a nativity play? It was about Jesus and stuff. Yeah, well, there was a porter there helping with his bags. Of course there was, I forgot. I yeah. mean, Mary and what Joseph, the they got there. Yeah, yeah, because cool. it was the whole, you know, because the, the inn was full. Yes. But I think the porter doubled up with the inn and the stable. Right, that was nice. So he, yeah. He yeah. carried bags over, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. so, you, yeah, yeah. You're right, though. I don't know why I was wearing one of them. But I was. And um, and your father said that? And how did you know your father said that? Did you he hear it? about it later. Oh, he told you about it later? Yeah, I was talking about stuff I'd done at school, and he said, oh, God, remember that. Uh, and he, I spoke to him the other day about it. Right. And, uh, yeah. Oh, God. Shame. Have so that was it? that was the end of your sort of drumming career, really, because it could have been. Yeah. I mean, you know, the audience loved it the night before. Yeah. <laughs> you could have like been like, who knows, a whole new world for you. Yeah. Have you done any stuff? I never drummed. I never drummed. I wish I had. Man. I wish but I had. Uh, that is that is that's uh, a movie story. But is that and that's why you don't and you don't tell you still your mum and dad don't know you on no, the radio, they do they? Think when they were down the other weekend, they had to come in. I just said, oh, I'll just go in and press a button. Because they could listen on Sky Digital, couldn't they? They could do. But you wouldn't want that, would you? I, I don't want that. No. Carl, I don't want to talk to you again a little bit about this later. Yeah. Yep. Princess Superstar, Bad Babysitter, first played on this show by Steve Merchant, by Bad Steve Merchant. That's true. By enough. by Steve Scratch Merchant. That's I right. mean, I, I still like that, but the videos put me off it a little bit because it's just. It makes it into the novelty record. It always had the potential of being. Do you I know agree. What I, mean? I agree. Although I, d- I was never a big fan of Baby Sit- Bad Babysitter. Was not uh, my my favourite from the album. Sure. Uh, sure. If people want my interest and in my views on hip hop, then they can always email in Rick. Of course. Or, or call you at home. Just give, <laughs> give me a ring at home. It's no problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, or I just pop out and you know, hang with them. In yeah. The hood. Yeah. Sure. You sure. Know, so, sure. Um, yeah. Now it's time for White Van Man. White Van Man. Um, <coughs> yes. For those, that, uh, those yeah. that don't buy the sun, they think it's beneath them. 
Um, <laughs> white Van Man is a column they have, I think, every day, actually, and uh, they just get sort of some, you know, Joe Public to kind of comment sure. on the week's news. It just seemed to me, uh, you know, that it might be interesting to uh, to get Carl's views yeah. on some of the big not, events. Not not because we think that Carl hasn't got a valid sort of viewpoint. No. Because Carl sees the world differently to some people. That's all. And that's, that's what's interesting. You know, like an artist does. Or a exactly. Yeah. Or He's very bohemian in his outlook. Yeah. Do you uh, do you feel that you're up to scratch on this week's news? I don't like this. But don't you? Don't just relax. Why not? Really. It's pressure. No, no, no. Because you just have pressure. to give us your first opinion. The honest answer. That's all we've ever asked of you, Carl. And it's all you've ever given us. Your honest, your first from the heart. Uh, of you, yeah. All don't right. worry. Just relax. No, just chill out. Are you worried that people are listening and thinking you're an idiot? If a girlfriend's listening now, go and have a wash or something. Go and have a wash? <laughs> Not very nice, is it? <laughs> is it the opposite of Napoleon and Josephine? <laughs> yeah, go on. Go on. If, if you're going to visit me again, Josephine, for fuck's sake, wash. Well, I'll yeah. ease you in with something fairly easy, a, a music-based question. Um, Kylie Minogue versus Dido as Queen of the Brits. What's your view there? Mm. Um, <laughs> go and have a wash. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, it doesn't really matter. What doesn't really matter? <laughs> With the Brits. I was watching it the other night, and um, I think Kylie will be a good-looking old woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh. Do you know, do you ever do oh. that sort of I wanna, people? Steve, I want to celebrate with you. Every time he opens his mouth, like I want us to open a bottle of champagne. I know what you mean. Do you know I what mean. I mean? It's yeah. like we did that. Yes. No, do you, do you, you ever do that, though? Look at people. And another person who springs to mind, Jenny Powell. I, <laughs> I don't think she's that good-looking now. Who's Jenny Powell? Is she that girl that used to be the si the assistant on Wheel of Fortune? Yeah, on Leslie? yeah, yeah. I think she's a bit over the top for a young woman, but when uh -huh. she gets older, I think she'll look be a right. bit of a stunner. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for you, Kylie, you know, well, or you don't feel that about Dido? Is that right? She's all right. She's normal. I prefer Kylie's sister to Kylie. Okay. Looks, you know, she. I could imagine her being at hard work to live sort of thing. Who Kylie? Not right. doing washing up and that. You right. Know, sure. Right. Oh okay. <laughs> And what do you make of uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? Well, my dad went to hospital to have an operation once. Yeah. So I feel like <laughs> it's worth paying it because I've, yeah. I've got some. Because pe people might go have to go to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise. Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. And the weird thing is, if it weren't for my dad. I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, that, that's <laughs> all you need to know. You, you wouldn't be here, true. But no, but well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I would be here. <laughs> but well, so for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing my dad in yeah. the hospital, I got a bit bored. <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station. Yeah. And got a gig. Really? So in in a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be. Here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he, like, sort of tap the nurse and go, can you get that twat off the air? <laughs> <laughs> Who's put him in that app? Yeah. No, uh, okay, um, what do you make of the real-life Mowgli who's surviving in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this story. I don't you, know. You know Mowgli, he's the guy from the one? Jungle Book. Yeah. The little oh. kid that grew up um, with bears and animals and stuff. Apparently there's a real-life one in Transylvania. What, what were the things in Gremlins? <laughs> what were the what? The, in Gremlins, they were. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is an example. This is what your girlfriend said. Think, what were the things in Gremlins called? I can't remember. Just, I mean, it's really. It's something like that, isn't it? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Just really, really think now, Carl. Just with all, with everything you've ever, with all the brain power you've ever used, think what the things in Gremlins were called. It's not there. There's a clue here. Oh, no. Yeah. They're not. What? Gremlins. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. <laughs> this is XFM. Well, we're back, and there's a few more people here. <laughs> it's absolutely it? well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well observed. Yeah. Do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi guys, hi guys. <laughs> and what are you doing here? Uh, we're, this is uh, Mark and James of Sco and Belch and we're here. Sorry, your names are what? Sorry, <laughs> say the last <laughs> bit again. Or oh, what? Sco and Belch. Sco and Belch? Yeah, that's right. Do you want to explain that? Um, no. No, <laughs> oh, from the <laughs> drinking story. games I imagine. Yeah. Oh. We've got worse names than that but it's radio so. Sure. <laughs> now, you're, you're presumably um, students? Uh, we, we've just, we've just, gra well we kind of graduated, we, we've been in work for like about a year or two. And so what do you do? Um, I work for a management consultancy. I work for a distribution company up in Birmingham. 
Right, well, okay. Yeah, now, you're, what you're doing is a, a scavenger hunt and you're raising for um, uh, a cancer um, charity. Cancer research. Right, yeah. and you've got to do... And this is... We're, we're just helping you out here because... For 17,000 points, you have to get live on a TV or radio show. That's exactly it. So that's, here we are. <laughs> that's why we're here. Yeah. Do, you, have you, do you ever listen to XFM? Uh, I know of it, yeah. I I listened to it a few times. Sure. What kind of music, what kind of sounds would you normally be into? Uh, oh, I love stuff. cheesy radio, sort of school disco, sort of, you know, 80s right, sure, stuff. Sure, sure. So what was your name again? Mark, or Sco. Sco, okay. okay. <laughs> and you're? Belch. Belch. Um, and what sort of sounds would you be uh, driven to, Belch? Uh, cheesy. UK Garage? Che- when, uh, well... Craig David. A, 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 bit of, a bit of house, just very occasionally, sure. a bit of cheese. It depends what kind of mood I'm in, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. Now, yeah. You, s- you don't listen much, but you, you, you I mean, kiss a celeb, because Carl... Yeah, we actually want to do that with you, Ricky, is that all right? No. Can that's not, not going to happen okay. with Ricky, but so you know Carl's now got his name mentioned in Heat magazine. Is yeah. that right? Well, so that's you, if brilliant. if you want to snog Carl, we'd love to see that. I mean, we don't want to <laughs> snog Carl, but I mean, we were thinking if there was kind of a female presenter here, we might be able to do something, but... Um, what are you saying? A female, <laughs> a female presenter? Well, if you've got one. Have you seen some <laughs> of the female presenters that work on XFM? Oh, presenter. Is that why they're on radio? I thought Quite. you said placenta. Um, <laughs> That's uh, unlikely. I know. Um, well, now what's the other things you've got to do here? So what, what's some of the things you've done already? Well, see, we some of these worry me, like start a fire in Pudding Lane. Oh, we've for, done that already. For 4,700 points. <laughs> Well, I'll t- tell you what we have done. We've been on, we've been on Phantom of the Opera stage already. Have you? Yeah, we, we just asked the stage door guy. Sure. And that um, wasn't during the show, I assume. No, yeah. And that's right, we also, we, he, actually, he actually mentioned that yeah, we shouldn't speak about that to you. Otherwise, he'll get sacked. Well. Well. sacked. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was really kind to let us on. Um, we jumped in Trafalgar Square Water with doing a sort of friends impersonation, so that was right. yeah, How many points did you get for that? We got 2,000 points for that. We got right. 8,000 points for being on the um, stage at, the, at Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. And we get double that. We get like 18,000 points, which is almost the maximum for being here right now. Really? So that's yeah, absolutely well, great. I, I, I wouldn't worry about the little things. I'd go for the big the Yeah, big that's it. We're, here. Not, we're, 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 not, we're not interested in the little stuff. We want to go for the big stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the big ones are uh, get on stage with S Club 7. That's not going to happen, is it? When have you got till Till 6 today? Well, yeah. S Club 7 are on at the London Arena uh, at about 2 o'clock. So. Good luck. But okay. we, we, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to get on there. But uh, we uh, I know. think so, yeah. Get in the vaults of a bank. Yeah, so some, of these, some of these are bordering on the illegal. That's 20 times points for <laughs> that. <laughs> um, like, like getting a cage at London Zoo. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, there's 10,000 points, but don't do it. Unless it's a penguin cage. <laughs> well, that's what we're hoping. Just some kind of air, timid admiral we might be all right with. You know? Yeah, sure. If anyone's got any good ideas for sort of funky things to do on air, then... Um, okay, well, if you, if, you leave, if you leave your number and anyone calls in, they can help you then. Well, maybe, maybe some of S Club's yeah. haven't been listening. Or if it's head sake, because, I mean, we love if, them to bits. If they are, it, it, it is for charity, and the, the points get awarded into money for colon cancer research. So it'd be absolutely fantastic if we could. Yeah, so Bradley, John... Tina, if you're listening. Yeah, if you're listening. <laughs> or any celebrity out there who's a female celebrity, we need to we need to snog them. It doesn't oh, need to be a long snog, yeah, but if we can, that'd be this great. Is, this is good for 7,000 points. This looks like a good one. Um, play the organ in a church. That must be easy. Is that a metaphor? Yeah, but the, you know what church <laughs> would be like. There it says the be bigger it. the better, <laughs> so it might be. That's got to be euphemism. Yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks very much. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Guys, yeah, thanks thank you very much. Standing outside Le Miz looking Miz. That's going to happen. That's good. <laughs> Man, so a big gun type thing on the HMS Belfast. That well, we've got something. a big gun. It's just finding the boat, which is the problem. Oh, so. calm down. What was your name? Bo? Poe. Poe. No. Po? Sco. 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 <laughs> thanks very much. Cheers. 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 Bye. Streets, let's push things forward on XFM 104.9, the home of charity. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. I, I've got to slow down because I'm a li- doing a little bit too much for charity. I've got to, I've got to worry about myself sooner <laughs> or later. Do you know what I mean? No, come on. We were halfway through uh, White Van Man. We were indeed, yes. Those, those, um, those lads came in. Getting Carl's views on some of the big stories of the week yeah. from the news. Um, Carl, what do you make of the fact that the British Olympic curling team won a gold medal? I watched it. Uh-huh. I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's getting on my nerves now is like, what's that? Is that a trombone <laughs> <player> just sneaked <laughs> in? That was me moving this microphone. Right. That was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. What an amazing right. noise. The only thing is... <laughs> that shouldn't sound like that, should it? That's incredible. What a shoddy tin pot station this is. Well, we know that. Sorry, Carl. Go on. It's like in all the papers now, and, and like the, you know, the star and the sun all week, there's been like in models over a bit of granite. Do you know, like how those things are made out of granite, the um, the things you throw. Oh yeah. And it just that that bit annoys me. 
Okay. The what, the Daily Star? <laughs> no, the way that, you know, this sport, nobody had ever sort of heard of it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Sure. They win a gold mar- medal, yeah. and now in the papers it's like... They've gone crazy, they've gone curling mad. It. Yeah. It's a good game, though. Yeah. Good. Okay, next. All right, good. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Mm. Let me see. <laughs> Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neasden? Uh, it's alright, next. Um, <laughs> something that someone <laughs> told me in the week is that, you know, all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird, they've only just found him, considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> someone... <laughs> oh, someone genius. told me that, um... <laughs> Uh, Do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is... It's called is, tall. It's something about... You're suffering from tall. He's got a, a small tumour or something just behind this part of your head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. Get it sorted. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is... um. Just projecting into the future. <laughs> Just projecting into the future now, K-Man. <laughs> Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's a bit worrying. Okay. Um, you don't. You wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time? No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got like deadly snakes. Yes. Yeah. Which are death. Did you know snakes are death? Snakes are death. They don't have ears. Okay. Um, so you're all right walking about behind them. Yeah. But if they see you ahead of you, you're, you're, you're in trouble. But yeah, with, with places like Australia, you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but they don't talk about the spiders and they keep the spiders sh- yeah. and stuff. Quite. So I think we've got. Bit of the both the best words. So, you're worried though about in the future the vultures flying through the sky? We've got various creepy crawly snakes. You concerned yeah. about that? Yeah, well, there's a load. I saw something in the news in the week that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start. Of it. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> no. Was that front page or? <laughs> <laughs> there's a load of sparrows somewhere. No, <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. Load of sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, anyway. Excellent. That's Thank great. You very that's, much, uh, Carl. that's uh that's Carl um giving his views on the news. Don't do that next week. <laughs> Why not? I just, I just don't like it. Why? Pressure. It's not pressure, you did brilliantly. Lost Profits there on XFM 104.9. Now, I like that. Mm-hmm. It rocks. I like the guitar. Atmosphere. It's good. But it's called the fake sound of progress. I know, I know. What See, what always annoys me is when people, um, they dismiss, you know, say, Enrique Iglesias, current number one. A great song. Good video. Brilliant video. And they say, oh, it's rubbish and all that. But I think that songs with titles like a fake sound of progress. Yeah. Much more something to get on your hobby horse about. What has happened in that Bad video? lyrics by if good artists is always worse than a If you're listening, song. or if you work for the record company, or you worked on that video... Because he's got the money and the girl, and then Mickey Rourke beats him up, right, he has a fight, you just see him knock him over, and then it cuts, and the next scene, it's night, it's not in the desert, there's loads of um, uh, police cars, they're not doing anything. They're, they're just standing and around. And somehow he's... Probably do- eating he's, donuts. He's dying of injuries, but I don't know what happened. They don't... What has happened in that video? I, I think c- if you heard the 12-inch mix, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other uh, sequences that explain what happened. Yeah, I mean, we all think, all of you think that he stole the girl off Mickey Rourke. I Rock think he stole the girl off Mickey Rourke, yeah. as well as some money. Some money, Mi- yeah. Mickey's tracked him down, Yeah. and he's thinking, I'm going to stop running, I'm going to face Mickey this time. He and does, it. and then, boom, you're right, it cuts, and suddenly the police have, yeah. have shot him or something. I don't know where they are. Don't know what the, the police just seem to be leaving him to die in there. See, I thought I thought that they'd called the police because the, the the sort of like the melee. Mm. But Mickey walks off with his gang. The police are going, well, you know, where are they? There's no evidence. They go, well, look, he's dying. They're going, but how did he die? Yeah. How is he dying? Is he's not? He's a bit wet for the. No, in no in Rourke though, Rick. I imagine he's uh, stitched Enrique up. I reckon he's framed him or something. Or or he's 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 no sort of like ninja stuff, and there's lots of internal injuries that yeah. aren't. Immediately Anyone, if you were involved with perhaps the making of that video, or indeed you are, Enrique Iglesias, give yeah. us a ring. If you're around. Come on. Just just fill us in. I'd, I need, I'd, um, 
I'd rather play some adverts now. Than I'd, love, I'd love to play some adverts, Rick, but I'll say this. I'd also like to tell the listeners that coming very soon on XFM, some huge news about Carl is. that will rock It'll the be capital. It'll like Pop Idol. It's going to be an ongoing saga. Go, man. Shot, shot. Good track. Good band. But I'll tell you what, in the second hour, I just want to play classics. I'd love to hear a bloody classic. I want to play right? some Cure, New Order, Smith. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Mm, Some, mm, you know, we mm. played Nirvana earlier, but it's not enough for me, Steve. No, you need I your fix. I want, <laughs> I do, well, I, it's that point in the show now, Song for the Lovers, mm -hmm. uh, one of my favourite singers, like, what, probably one of the most beautiful singer songwriters of all time. Well, you don't mean that, like, you don't mean that he's a good looking bloke and you fancy him. <laughs> I mean, I just want to clear that up, Rick, because otherwise, <laughs> that would, yeah. What you uh, mean is that the songs you write are beautiful. Yeah, you can take or leave him as a bloke. Can't yeah, of course, of course, yeah. He's and I've got, I've got, and, and he's, he's written, mo he's written such brilliant classics with his lovely ass as. Oh, <laughs> what did I say that? What did you say, did that, say that, that, Rick? Because people will that? listen and misinterpret. Oh God, um, uh, he wrote Galveston. He wrote Wichita Line Man. He wrote, um, the yeah, he wrote MacArthur Park, and just to tickle him down below. What? what? I don't know Are what. You Thieves. <laughs> and this is uh, a song. One of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It's off um, a, a few album, Ten Easy Pieces, which is just him doing the versions um, of other, you know, that he gave to other people on piano. And this is um, called If These Old Walls Could Speak. And it is absolutely beautiful. Listen to this. If These Old Walls Could Speak by Jimmy Webb. Might play another track off that later if we've got time. What today? Yeah, well, maybe or maybe next week. We've got knows, we've got lots to pack in. We've got things like New Order, Cure. Oh, I'm just hoping that um, <laughs> all those kind of new metal fans, Rick, can just calm down for a second, you know, yeah, and, and just enjoy that for what it was. Yeah, I hope, well, they're not, know, I hope their snobbery is not going to uh, prevent them from enjoying. I it. I hope they can just leave it alone for two hours for our show. Because exactly. We try and you know we get try and pack lots of. Well, whilst stuff you're in. talking about new metal, can I just say Ian Comfield is here tonight. He's what? moving from Friday. Right, what the hell does he think he's doing? He's well, just offering up information now. No, it's just that you were talking about the new metalers, and now seems like a good time to Carl, say... Carl, listen, you're here for our amusement. Yeah. You don't, you don't sort of come in any time you want. When we decide it's time to sort of have some fun at your expense, then we'll let you know, but yeah. otherwise... This is, we're not here to help other DJs, or, or, or even this station. We don't give a... about this... See, this is what my girlfriend said. What's that? <laughs> well, you should listen to her. She, she knows what she's talking about, clearly. Now, put your microphone you down. She said they just wheel you out when they need you. Switch your microphone off, Carl, and let us finish what we were saying. <laughs> right, just... What yeah. were we saying, Rick? Um, uh, Ian Canfield has got a rock show. Oh, right, yeah. Starting today. Four hours of pure rock. rock. Yeah, he's probably here smoking, drinking Jack Daniels, and just, like, having pictures of Vance put up around him <laughs> to get in the mood. Then he'd go out and rock. <laughs> Carl, don't be silly. Turn your microphone on. We're joking. It was, uh, it was... Is that right? When's he on? Eight till twelve tonight. Four hours of rock. <laughs> Lovely. Listen, um, some big classics coming up. Plus, oh, huge no, no, please news mad. about oh, no, Carl. Please, let's play some more ads. Do you really want some ads? I'm tired of the music and chat. Please, play some more ads, Carl. Please. Oh, Carl. Christ's sake. <laughs> Cure on XFM 104.9. That's what it's all about, Steve. Absolutely classics. Yeah, we've got some more classics coming up. Looking forward to them. Now, when we were talking to Carl in the week, the things we're talking to Carl is that you come up with something that's sort of like um, quite innocent, and he goes, ah, well, the once, right? And you realise that it's comedy dynamite. Yeah. He doesn't know it, but we want to go save it. And he let out, um, you were filling in a form, weren't you? It's, it was all about your girlfriend thinking you're a div. And it's happened before, isn't it? Because she came home and you'd filled out a form to get a job once, hadn't you? Yeah. What was that for? Granada so, Telly. And on it... Well, uh, let Carl explain. Yeah. Um... You, you, you see, this is what annoys me with job applications, because rather than just saying, do you want the job, and what can you bring to this business? Yeah. Do you want yeah, the job yeah. is a good one. Because yeah. the thing is... <laughs> that, 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 that's what I'm for the boys. No, listen, right? Because if they say no, yeah, I don't think they want the job. Yeah, but listen. Go on. I mean, I presume with what you do, you, you have to take people on and stuff. Well, I've got a fight, you mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's more important that you're willing to graft and put the hours in... Sure. ...than say that, you know... You, you did well at school. Yes, sure. Because if I wanted to, I could have done well at school. Of course. I just, I just didn't want to. Yeah. So where's this going? So you had the application form. So when it came to the...
qualification is better than that. I couldn't fill them in because I didn't have any qualifications. And it was also asking about your languages. And uh, I put down English quite good. English quite good. Ha ha ha. And his girlfriend Brilliant. came over and seen the form that he'd sent off. This was a copy, copy of it. Yeah. And so she went, oh, you know what I mean? So that's what started, you know, the disappointment. So they're going to get that and think that you're not English. I don't think I've got it. It was ages ago. Right. <laughs> How long ago was it? Oh, well, it was when I was still in Manchester, so five years ago. I don't think you've got it, no. <laughs> um, no, I, I, yeah, no, I think you'd... There yeah. could be a long list. I mean, th- th- there's probably a lot of admin problems in that organisation, but they, they've probably... But what, prob- what I meant by it is that... Me Engl- you know, I can speak English, but I don't know all these long words that people use all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, can I just tell this quickly? Um, I- in the week, um, I'm talking to you now, the listener. Um, usually I don't. Yeah. Uh, Carl said, oh, uh, about embarrassing him on air and that, and he's worried about his education. And he was worried about not knowing long words. Like, we come up with any long words. Mm. And he said, no, I, l- I, was, I was scared um, you were going to ask me something about um, someone. And he's... Uh, Eastern European leader, his surname is Milosevic, and Carl said, so I learnt it this week, and learnt it so you can't catch me out in case you say, I said, what? And he said, he thought about it, and he went, Flobodan Milosevic. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the surname right though, doesn't he? He's so what's his, right. what's his name? That's how Bill and Ben would address this leader. <laughs> how would they have said it? Flobodan Milosevic. What's his name? S- Slobodan yeah. Milosevic. Yeah, well done. well done. Anyway, Carl, look, you almost let it slip then as you were talking about your uh, filling out that application form. There's some big news that everyone needs to know, which we were stunned by in the week. Although, the more we sort of talk to you, the more it starts to fall into place. Yeah. But, Carl, what's the story? That I haven't got me, uh, me exam results from my GCSEs. He never turned up to get his exam results. I was working. And so, how many did you take in the end? Because you weren't even sure about that, were you? You think you took maths and English, don't you? Yeah. And you, you think you've handed in the artwork. For art, now you? art was um, continual assessment, wasn't it? Yeah. Coursework. And what was the that you had you made? I made a man st- sort of putting his arms into a car. You <laughs> you made a model of a man putting his arms into a car. What was this? So that like, one's passed. Was we that, that, that this a homage to break-ins in Manchester? <laughs> was this? <laughs> <laughs> was this? <laughs> oh look, he does what he sees. Yeah. Um, so, so you've what got that. That's safe. You so definitely got that one. So you've taken mm-hmm. art. You've taken English and maths. You think. So this is what we're going to do, listeners. We're going to try and find out his exam results for him and tell him next week. Live on air. We're going to call his school. We're going to try and track him down. And we are going to have a little envelope. And we are going to give Carl, at the age of 29, his O-level results. Uh, GCSEs. GCSEs, yeah. Now, Carl, so you took maths, yeah. you think. You took English. You took, do you remember turning up to do those? Do you remember sitting in the room, filling in the forms? Yeah. Okay. And how did you feel you did? <laughs> I didn't. I don't think I did well. You don't think you did well? Did you revise? No. Why didn't you revise? Because I, I don't really believe in it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just that if you don't know it, then you don't know it. You shouldn't have to start looking at the book. If I went to the doc, if I went to a, like the hospital, yeah, and the doctor said, "Oh, you need your appendix out," but hang on a minute, I've just got to read up on it. Yeah. That isn't good enough. Okay. He should know, and that's that's the way I feel about it. To be it. fair, though, he did do the revision beforehand. Yeah, they don't usually pass on, uh, like maybe like when they're in practice. Yeah, information they the took line. in by osmosis. Yeah, yeah, and they bloke comes in and goes, "Can I just see what you did with that?" And I goes, "You've passed." Yeah. Phew. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Good job I watched Casualty. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the way you know the things that interest me. I remember things okay. like snakes not having ears and stuff. Yeah. I didn't have to read about that. No, you just learned that. Yeah. You saw it on the telly, didn't you? You saw yeah. it on that Ian Wright program. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Carl said to me. He said, uh, only, no, it's actually, um, I, I called Carl up in the week and Reese was with him. You know, Reese used to be on XFM yeah, and he yeah. took the phone and he went, Carl's worried. I've seen that program. He said, snakes don't have ears, right? He said, so you can creep up on them and pick them up. And he said, Carl's worried. He said, how would you ever put them down again? Because <laughs> <laughs> then they know that you're there. I woke up the other night quite late. Worried about that. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, how do you put a snake down? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, that Ian Wright thing, this guy managed to pick up a snake. And do you know that thing where they clump its head on the jar to get the poison out? <laughs> I do know. Right? <laughs> they did that, but they didn't show you how they got rid of it. And I thought, it could really get nasty, because it's obviously annoyed that you've had its head pressed in the jar. Yeah. yeah right? They hate that. Now. Especially as it's in front of their mates. When you lift it off. Yeah. Right? You've got hold of it. Yeah. If you go to chuck it down. <laughs> It's going to turn on you. It's going to go wild, isn't it? So, 
I, I just wondered. Well, what you do is you never put it down, Carl. Yeah, that's why. That's, that's why that bloke has got about you know eleven or twelve just carrying him. Exactly. Yeah, you never put it down. You sling it. Who cares? You just throw it, don't you? Really far. <laughs> that's not that. I don't think you should throw. But snakes. Carl, listen, don't, don't worry. You don't, we're not asking you to get involved with snakes. We're just asking you now. You did. You, you've, you've you've done ma- maths. You think? Yeah. Did no revision for that. No. Okay. Uh, English. Do you remember what it was? Did they ask you about Shakespeare? Did they ask you about books? I remember, but I must have done it because I thought that was. It was English language, not English literature, wasn't it? So it was Was like spelling and so was it? No, was it? Was it like a comprehension? You read a passage and had to ask questions on it. Was it? uh, Did you have to write a short essay? I don't know. I can't remember any of that. (laughs) Okay. I did. I did a science. Okay, physics or chemistry. Physics. All right. Well done. And uh, this is all you think? You actually took that? You actually took physics, do you say, so you think? You're obliged to do a language, I think. Did you do French? I did French for a bit. I don't think you are. I don't think you have to do a language. I think you have a GCSE, I think you've got to. Well, English is quite good. (laughs) I think that's his language he did. So you don't know about language. History? Geography? Just what you will find out, won't we? Okay. But you just can't remember. I I, I can't believe you can't remember turning up for these things, because it's quite a big moment in people's lives. It is, that, the, it is the thing that you've been working to all of your educational life. On the day that the, the things came out, I was working at a print, as a printer. Okay. And it was a really busy day. A lot of spelling mistakes that it day. It was a really busy day, day, so you're bound to forget. Yeah, the, the yeah. Reserves. No, but I, I had to use gold ink that day. Oh, and it's, yeah, I mean, you're yeah, not a printer, yeah, yeah. so you don't, you don't know. No, this. no, no, that's the biggie, isn't it? But it's tough. You've got to really get your rollers clean. <laughs> Carl, play a record, mate, and good luck with the exam results. Hopefully we'll have them for you by next week. <laughs> PJ Harvey on XFM 104.9, the home of the classics. Absolutely. Classics. Classics. Classics, classics, classics. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Oi, oi, oi. Um, well, we were uh, <laughs> talking earlier about this... Um, uh, as this book, they died young, right? And it's all these theories about these people, uh, like famous people that um, uh, aren't really dead. And I remember speaking to someone about this, okay? And they said to me, Bruce Lee is not dead. <laughs> right? They said he's not dead, right? Uh, and I thought it was, I said, well, um, how do you know? I said, he's going, no, it was a whole big thing by the Hong Kong government, and he's actually working as an undercover cop in Hong Kong. <laughs> I've, I've using, this. using his is kung fu powers now no he's apparently he faked his own death Carl, yeah. so that he could work undercover for the hong kong yeah. police infiltrating gangs the triads that sort of thing now my point is this if you're going to use someone undercover in hong kong right you know an undercover cop i suggest using the most famous chinaman of all time that yeah that would that's be a guarantee yeah, yeah yeah so you know when he's taking away a gang they're going you look a bit like bruce lee he's going no no i don't know See this this moustache? Who's a bit wonky? Well, it's, uh, just just take my word for it. I'm not Bruce Lee, all right? Well, all that stuff he did when you were punching us and kicking us and chopping, yes. But, Cohen, I'm not. Yeah. It does look a bit like the stuff in my film, in, in his films. In his films, yeah. But it's, it's not. It does it's not. just coincidence. No, yeah. The thing is, though, and not sounding bad here, not trying to offend anyone, but they do all look right. the same. They okay. do all look no, the no, same. No, no, no. It's... No. I no, no. You know, we're having a serious chat. I'm right. Not, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to upset anyone. Right. And what I'm saying is, over here... I'm so sorry. No, I'm not... Yeah, but you know me. I'm not I'm not out to upset right. anyone. Right. You're not a racialist? No. What so, do you mean? You, you, are you saying all saying people is, all look alike? Well, look, look at the people over here, right? Yeah. With, like, you've got... No. You've got ginger this. people. Oh. <sighs> You've got people with black hair, you've got people who are fat, yeah. people who are thin, yeah. but they're all so sort of fit, which isn't a bad thing. They all do that sort of thing in the park. They're all fit. It's a place where black hair... I mean, when they come here, they take pi- pictures of people with ginger hair, don't they? Because they don't get them over there. That's what I'm saying. So calm down. Jeez. <laughs> so you're saying that Bruce Lee... The most famous Chinese movie star of all they time. They can't tell him apart. Other away. other trial members would. How are they? I mean, how are they going about the business at all? I yeah. mean, what I'm saying is, how, how would they even realise yeah. that that was the guy? What do they have to do? Wear numbers in, you know, because there's 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 a billion. No, but of when, them. You, when you know them, then you know. So them. what? Oh, I see. They can tell each other apart, can't they? Well, they got signals. <laughs> I, this is amazing, isn't it? Sorry, get away with Simon, it. Simon, which one are you? Just raise your hand, Simon. <laughs> yep. Chang, which one's Chang? Chang, good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it must be murder, mustn't it? Just that can be the only people thing. going into the wrong houses. 
all the time, <laughs> getting off with their mates' wives. Exactly. Yeah. It must be a nightmare. Though. It must be a nightmare. Um, this, uh, Carl, please don't complain. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I'm really sorry to anyone. Uh, he honestly does not know what he's saying. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Yeah, but what I'm saying is... Go on. I don't think I am offending anyone. <laughs> okay. Fine, that's all right then. And you know that I wouldn't want to do that. No, I know you don't. Oh, I know. I swore oh, I know. Radio, I said, right, if you've got kids in the car, turn your radio. <laughs> so before you make any potentially racist remarks, just point out if you are listening and you might be oriental. Yeah. Please don't take offence. Or go... Oh, oh. You know what I mean. So yeah. Then, so what, what was this other dead person? <laughs> Carl, play a record. Ricky's having a heart attack. We'll come back. Well, the music of tomorrow is here. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exo Exo There's been some sort of muck up with the post. <laughs> um, Rick, a lot of the times when I played uh, Hip Hop Hooray, my uh, hip hop track of the week, yeah. you've sort of scoffed, you've thought that maybe I don't have credibility amongst the hip hop fraternity. No, it's just the way you dance. Well. It's merely the way you dance that, that worries me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. people can't see it, really. And it's sort of like, imagine if Mr Bean thought he was in D12. You know what I mean? It's it's that sort of... And I don't diss you. I mean, I, I know you're, you're, you're a hip-hop appreciator. You know, I wouldn't expect man. you to diss me. <laughs> or my black queen. Um, but uh, the point is that I just... Uh, there's a little something that Carl's got on tape for you that I think might change your opinion of my uh, whole hip-hop credibility. Oh, no. Um, now, I've told you in the past... It's not you a know, video I, tape, is it? Not at all, not at all. Actually, oh. Carl, just play it, just play it. Yo, one, two, one, two, we are the Dilated Peoples, chilling on Hip Hop Parade. That's right. With Steve Merchant, y'all, XFM 104.9, LA to London, Dilated People expanding them all day. Now, you've got that about that. No, it was just when I was hanging out with my homies. No, did you did? Do they come in the week? They were in the week, I think, and somebody got them to do it for him. Yeah, no, that was when I was just I was just hanging in the crib with them. No, 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 no. That's very nice. And the and the guys just put just laid down some beats for me. Yeah, you know, just let down some vocals and uh, and I gave him match respect for it. You know, and the place was mad deep with girls at the time. I assume you're going to play Dilated Peoples this week then. Well, maybe. Yeah, let's play it, Carl. That's very good. Respect, guys. Cheers very much. Add it here. Yeah, yeah guys, just maxing there. Lovely. Good to hear from them. Good to hear from the boys. <laughs> Or probably, I'll probably be heading over to LA NYPD and just, uh, just you know, chilling with them. Sometimes. I'd love them to meet you. You're not having a laugh. They, they I'd love them to meet you. We would hang out. I know all the, the giants. It's like a thing they do on um, MTV or X, where like, being dilated peoples, and yeah. they come in, they make us three look yeah, like, like a rap group. People. Wouldn't that be great? Listen, I told you before, I've always remembered the words of, um, of Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah. Bitch is a bitch and a hoe's a hoe, but if a man be acting like a bitch, he's a bitch-ass homie. All yeah, right? sure. Now, those are the words from sure. the street. I would. Uh, it's, it'd be like you, you two had won a competition or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, and I, I just don't think you can. Uh, you can believe it that I'd just be hanging out. You know, with so like in the crib. People of courage, and you get a chance to meet your <laughs> favourite. It'd, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Listen, we were talking earlier about uh, the fact that um, Bruce Lee, and it's a well-known fact. Yeah. He faked his own death so he could continue his um, undercover police work, as Be opposed to being because no one would. Yeah, you know, he doesn't no look one different fine. to anyone else. But I was talking to someone as well recently who. Um, Utterly convinced, and you get this quite a lot, don't you? Especially Americans, that uh, Elvis Presley's still alive. Yeah. And I think wasn't there some statistic like more people believed Elvis was alive than thought, than believed evolution? Was that right? Yes. Like that? No, 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 no. Um, no, it's something worse than that. It's. It could be something. It was something, something like that. Something, 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 something like I don't know. It's something like 42% of Americans yeah. believe that Elvis Presley has faked his own death and is still yeah. alive, right? Yeah. And there's this whole book that's been written about it because um, Carl, you might be interested in this. I know you're always fascinated by things that have been written down and therefore a gospel. Yeah. And um, and that you don't have to revise yourself. You just learn off <laughs> Ian Wright. Yeah. yeah. But apparently, um, the reason that Elvis is still alive um, is that there's a number of sort of pieces of evidence. One is that no, none of his family could agree which colour pajamas he was wearing when he died. That's yeah. evidence, apparently. Apparently, um, you know he was an honorary member of the FBI. Well, apparently his signature appears on FBI documents well into the 80s, long after he should have died. Um, apparently no one can agree. There were sums of money a lot that of, only... Yeah, a lot of fat people in dungarees have seen him. Yeah. There's a number of there's sums of money which apparently only he could have given authority to have transferred to other bank accounts. They've moved. Yeah. So this is all evidence that Elvis is still alive. 
And um, a lot of people was, I was talking to this guy, and he was saying, yeah, well, of course, the thing is, he, he, the pressures of fame were too much for him, that he faked his own death so that he, he no longer had to be this, this huge icon, you know, he could live an ordinary life. And my query has always been this, if Elvis faked his own death, do you think he, the, the method he'd have chosen is to have shat himself to death whilst on the toilet? Yeah. Yeah, but because he picked that, nobody will doubt it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Elvis went to the FBI. Yeah. What do you make yeah. of it? Well, exactly. So the, what we're saying, Carl, is that there was lots of methods open to him. You know what I mean? It's all like, uh, he didn't go to his, his, his secret reason and go, oh, I'm afraid I want to, I want to fake my own death. I mean, and they yeah. go, yeah, that, that. <laughs> yeah. And what, hey, what, what methods have you got? I like to be found, shit myself down my toilet. You like to do what? I want to be a big fat mother. I'm yeah. the toilet, just shit myself to death. Right, I just on my ankles. No, that, that, that obviously, it's a good idea. I'm just wondering if there's maybe something a little bit more glamorous for your favourite. I mean, you could take a bullet for the president. Oh, what and shit all over him? Just shit no, 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 we, no, we know crap at all. I mean, what's no, you just you just take a bullet oh, for him, or you could. Be, there has to be shit involved. What, why has it got to be? There has to be shit involved. Why has it got to be crap? I want this way. Oh, make it happen. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably the <laughs> car head in hand, look. Yeah. He's worried about the things we say. Yeah. Jeez. We haven't offended 1.2 billion people. Yeah. A, a fifth of the planet. So, Carl, what do you make of it then? Do you, are you what convinced you say? Elvis is alive? Um, is, am I getting it mixed up with someone else? Because <laughs> like, all Elvis, no, no, all no, no, Elvises no. look alike. Because... That, now, that is true. A lot of Elvises do look alike. That's yeah. safe. On his gravestone, yeah. didn't they get his name wrong? Or is that his brother? Who's his brother? Um, <laughs> a Aaron. No, that's his middle name. Yeah. You're not an Elvis um, kind of expert, are you? Hold on, was Elvis was uh, wasn't Elvis a, one of a twin that yeah, died? That died, and I'm sure he got his name wrong in a grave or something. Oh, I don't know. But that's so that's consequently that's proof he's still alive. No, uh, the thing with the uh, still alive thing. Um, like I say, he, he picked that up with death because nobody would be saying, hang on a minute, going round upsetting the family, wanting to talk about it because he'd be embarrassed to be saying, you know, we, he was found sort of yeah. in a pile of mess. Weighing 25 stone. Yeah. yeah. So... Because you notice he also expanded to a huge size as well, so he was just a huge fat blob of a man. He also did that to, to add, you know, extra... To so the glamour. I, I don't quite understand all this, these people who fake the deaths because... Well, and a lot of them don't. Work. A lot of them don't, Carl. This is what this is what, in a roundabout way, we're saying. We're saying that a lot of people that say people fake that they who, didn't, who, who like else, Bruce Lee and uh, James Dean and Elvis Presley. We're saying they didn't no, fake the death. He did die, didn't he? His head, his head come off, didn't he? <laughs> Very good. Who's this? <laughs> James Dean. His head came off. <laughs> there is a light that never goes out. The Smiths, XFM, one hundred four point nine. Nearly through. Absolutely. Two hours of chat, great music. Bloody good music. Carl. Of course. Speaking yeah, before he <laughs> thinks. thinks. By the way, you know when he was going about Mowgli? You know he was going to talk about Mowgli and you said, oh, what are the gremlins called? Yeah. Were you thinking of, oh, Mugwai, Mugwai. Yeah, but they were still, fair, they were, they they were called gremlins. gremlins. Yeah. yeah, he was, yeah. I know what you're thinking. I know, to be fair. I think my girlfriend won't be listening now, so <laughs> she'll still think I'm a bit daft. She ne how could, why, why would she ever think that? How long have you been going out with her? Eight years. Well, then, wh why would she ever think you're daft? That's the only stupid thing you've ever said, the, the Mogwai thing. Why would she ever think she's going out with a, to be honest, mm. a retard? I, I, think, um, I think it's a very beautiful relationship you must have, you know. Because it's odd, I, c I mean, she's a professional journalist or whatever, Yeah. you know, and she works for, is it uh, Radio 5 or something? Uh, BBC Sport. BBC TV. Sport. So and you're a man who never even uh, got Her English is quite good. Her, is, her, is English quite good, her? Really good. Yeah? So. And did she do her exams? Yeah, she's quite bright. Sure. So what do you bring to the relationship? <laughs> I, th I think I uh, take the pressure off her. <laughs> take the know. pressure off her uh, to do what? You know, like... When she's had a stressful day and she comes home and talks to me, I think. Yeah. You would relax me, and that's the truth. I, 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 honestly, but you know, Carl, you can just he can just go, wow, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, he don't get stressed. He sits in his little booth now. He doesn't talk to anyone. His little sound booth all the week, and you just, you just, 
you in your own little world, aren't you? Well, it's interesting because I wonder sometimes what your aspirations are. I was thinking this. I was watching uh, a repeat of Family Fortunes on uh, Challenge TV last night, and it was sort of mid eighties one. And I don't know if it's still the case, but it was the aspirations of the contestants. It was yeah. so kind of. It was like, and what's your hobby? Well, you know, um, like to go out when it's nice. Weather and oh. stay in. Well, when if, it's you, not. if you win two thousand pounds, you'd probably be going out when it's nice, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, "Well, and I, you know, I, I sometimes like to watch TV, you know." And I was thinking, "Wow, you know, man, you've really got some incredible but what, dreams." But what, 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 what it's I, just like that. I'm, you're just waiting to die, aren't what, you? That's what all I you're... feel sorry for. Right? Two things. Like, um, you know, in like stars in their eyes, and you get a little fellow, and he and he's gutting fish in a some sort of factory in Bolton and he comes on and he does uh, you know something like Bobby Darren okay and he's a, and and Matthew Kelly comes out after he goes well I don't think you'll be going back to the fish factory you will <laughs> you will be going back you will straight back yeah hey, mate. yeah let's yeah. think of don't all wind, the stars don't the wind stars. Kelly because that's a nasty thing to do I'm trying to think. Um, trying to think of all the uh, stars in the rise contestants that have gone on to great things. Well, haven't that little feather looked like the, the little Alsatian puppy that did Christa Burr? He looked oh. a bit like Christa Burr. He looked like he, li he had problems. Well, I yeah. Now, what was it? Is Ian Moore his name was? Now he now he he was. Uh, well, like, it's interesting. My friend bought me as an ironic gift for my birthday. He bought me the uh, live video of Ian Moore. <laughs> Um, you'll be pleased to know that Lady Red was on there, among a number <laughs> of other hits. Um, but it was it was brilliant. It was called. It had a picture of Ian on the front. It said Ian Moore naturally. <laughs> I didn't Jackie know it was too big for him as well. Of course. It was ludicrous. But I don't know if that meant Ian Moore naturally, like we all know who this guy is. It's Ian Moore. Yeah. Or was it Ian Moore, he's no longer being Christa Burr. He's just natural. What did he sound like when he wasn't being Christa Burr? Christa Burr. Did he <laughs> really? Because he met him, didn't he? He met... Yeah. Well, Christa Burr, I think Christa Burr couldn't wait to get back on the telly. Well, the thing is, I think I think Ian Moore is actually earning more than Christa Burr now. <laughs> I think... They could have got Christa Burr on there. Yeah, you, as can, a you can get Christa Burr for £1,000, but Ian Moore's been up for 1200 now. <laughs> just to the PA to, a, you know, adapt. But he does lady anyway, He does all the hits. He does, don't pay the ferry man. Yeah. Don't even say the price. <laughs> does all those. Interestingly, I saw him interviewed once, and uh, Lady in Red's not his favourite song. You're joking. It's bizarre, isn't it? But he was only going to play that if, um, uh, it was the, uh, fat, uh, ginger, Sarah Ferguson. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was only if she was wearing some red. He was only going to play that when? It, yeah, well, it's, it was a live thing, and he was only going to play that if she was wearing red or something. Right. Didn't That's her beautiful. freckles count? That's beautiful. No, so, it, she had, luckily she had a red, that must have clashed with her a bit. Yeah. A red scarf on, on a... Face. And the highlights in your hair that catch the light. Yeah. Such a beautiful lyric. Never yeah. seen the look as the love is. The thing is, right, he, he misses a rhyme there. He goes, uh, I'm going to ask you to uh, dance, looking for oh, a little oh, romance. romance. Now he could have yeah. said dance, <laughs> couldn't yeah. he? I, uh, I've met a man once in a, in a bar I was talking to him for some reason. I, I was annoyed by him. I was wound up by him. And um, I said that I'd written Lady in Red and uh, I never got any money for it because I found that he was like a music lawyer. And he went, well, give me a call. I'll investigate that. And he was actually going to do it for me. I, was I love the idea of that. Just, <laughs> Why did you say that? Really bored, and I didn't like him much. And I was just, and I thought that was. Um, that Why might did be you choose change. Lady in Red though? Because I think I was singing it with a friend of mine, and sure. he came over and went, "Oh, good voice." And I went, "Yeah, I wrote this." What it pub is this? <laughs> it was North. Is it? Yeah. Never seen looking so lovely as you did tonight. So um, anyway, those, that's enough of my Christopher <laughs> anecdotes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, very much the end of the show. Uh, and uh, it is. It's been a great. It's been a great show. Hang on, have I got time for a song for the lovers, or have I missed that? No. If you give it me, Chris Yeah. What are you going to play? What are you going to play? What are you going to play a song now and then? We've got time for it. No, you have to give it me. Yeah. Right oh, now. I better dig it out. Well, can, what, can you keep what, people? Yeah, what, what have you chosen? I'll, I'll keep it going. Well, um, a friend of mine who keeps making me little compilations is stuck on an old Tom Waits track, which is uh, from his first album, one that I've not listened to for a while. Brilliant. Really listen to it. It's an absolute diamond. Brilliant. Brilliant. Can anyone hear this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's just getting out of his bag now because we were we weren't prepared for this. We we sort of ran out of time. We're having such a great time with the philosophy of Carl. What do you, what do you fancy doing anyway for, with your future? Me? You know, I'm just I'm just going to tell you now. You know we're still on air, don't you? <laughs> Before it gets too casual. You know we are still broadcasting yeah, yeah. to the capital. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you fancy doing with your future? Well, Steve? once I've made all that money from uh, suing Christa Burr. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, you know, my future. I'm living my future. Man. I wanted to have some good mates like yourself and Ricky. Yeah. You know, Carl, I wanted to be on the radio. We're going to play great we're, songs. We're like the Three Musketeers, me, you, and see. We're, it's like we're like the original Rat Pack. We're, we're like Ocean's Eleven. I'm Sinatra. Yeah. Um. You're you, you're Sammy Davis Jr. And you're what's his name? D Martin, aren't you? Yeah, or Joey Lawrence. What's his name? Joey Lawrence, not Joey Lawrence. Joey Bishop. Joey Deacon. Joey Deacon. <laughs> My dad said the ending on the old one's better than the new one. <laughs>
We should definitely get your dad in, man. That would be just dynamite. When people get tired of you, we've got, we've got the whole Pilkington family. To <laughs> yeah, do the whole gene pool. Have you seen it? No. Carl, have we got time for this now, really, what, mate? What track? <laughs> to be fair. Okay, it's track number one. Now, interesting thing about shoddy. Tom Waits is that um, this is his, from his first album, and he doesn't sound like that kind of gruff, you know, lived-in guy that he wants to be. He actually smoke. sounds something of a crooner. Yeah. But this is a track called Old 55, which bizarrely, I think, might have been covered by the, um, the Eagles. But anyway, it's, I think it's a really lo- lovely track, really beautiful track. I'll see you next week. And we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Carl. But yeah. Say sorry. For what? For if you offended anyone. I didn't. <laughs> so if I say sorry, that's saying I'm guilty. <laughs>